Yes. Good morning, everyone. Just till Lali comes, our today's topic is on COVID anxiety. And um, uh, we have, uh, you know, done a few surveys and all which we will be talking about. And um, so, yes, uh, I hope everyone's doing well today. So yeah, we're waiting here for uh, Dr. Ali to come. We have a free webinar here on the 12th of February for our uh, IPCG, International Program in Counseling Skills and Guidance. You're most welcome to join us and call on those numbers flashing on the screen. So you can learn it from the convenience of your home uh, with a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session from an experienced counselor. And uh, yes, you can. So here we have Dr. Ali. <sighs> Very good morning. I hope you know the fact that stress is cumulative. Stress keeps adding on, building up. It keeps leaving scars. It has this effect of, you know, increasing every time something bad has happened. This is something which sometimes we ignore. People say, yes, I went through a very bad time. I was very stressed out. I faced this challenge, this setback, this hurdle. And it was a very bad time. And you know what? I overcame it. I have moved beyond that. Now, I'm leading a complacent and a happy uh, life. But you know what? Because I could handle that setback, that hurdle last time, I think I'm more competent now to handle. Yes, in terms of skills, you are more competent to handle something because you have gone through a similar situation or a stressful uh, situation. But the fact remains that it has left certain baggage, certain scars on your uh, mind. So your capability, your ability to be able to handle stressful situations has actually come down. Now this I am talking in the context of the COVID. As you are all aware, initially when it uh, uh, came, People were taken by surprise. They were inconvenienced. Those who lived a hand to mouth, daily wagers and all that, obviously went through a very, very bad uh, time. But those who were middle class and above, those who had their own homes, families, their you know financial support or whatever, they managed to sail through. In fact, Many even said that this was an enjoyable experience in certain ways because we could connect to the family, we could all be together, <clears throat> we understood, we spent some quality time with each other. And of course, everybody was thinking that this will be three weeks, six weeks, whatever. 
it is and then it will be over and then the crisis will go and we'll happily get back to but the interesting thing was and many of you also would have noticed it that when the lockdown was lifted it was extended by a few more weeks and slowly they started removing it the government said yes you can step out of your house uh, no we won't stop you from moving around going uh, out meeting people going to your office etc when that happened normally we would have expected that there would be a huge you know rush towards get, catching up with so many weeks and so much time that was lost be it in terms of work that i have to go to office catch up with work build back my business or get back my customers or whatever at the same time people whom i have missed i have relatives i have friends i have people whom i could not meet for such a long time earlier we used to meet on a regular basis for such a long time i could not meet because of the lockdown so i would be very very keen to go and visit inquire their welfare spend some time with them but you know what happened the only places where there was this huge rush and huge queue to make up for lost uh, time was in uh, you know stores selling liquor those are the ones which saw this great rush that oh, so many days i have not been able to buy liquor so now i better you know make sure that i have enough stocks of uh, it barring a few things like that and of course some supermarkets and also also saw a bit of that uh, uh, rush but otherwise what happened people were hesitant to come out and i was surprised i would call up somebody and say hey lockdown has been lifted yes yeah, why don't we meet no not right now we'll see give me some time okay then things started improving slowly 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 even some schools reopened some other things happened offices got back and you know when we were thinking that everything will go fine second wave uh, came and second wave as you know the number of deaths were much higher the number of people who landed up in icus or on ventilators was much higher than in the first uh, wave so that created a huge fear so when the second wave was lifted i found even lesser people willing to step out willing to get back to the old normal etc they felt very very restricted somehow we struggled through the rebuilding after the second wave and then the third wave came okay now that the third wave really seems to be easing off when we look back upon this third wave you will all agree with me that the impact of this third wave was much much lesser than the first and second uh, uh, waves isn't it in all uh, areas except numbers numbers were huge compared to earlier i think this time we can definitely say there was hardly any family left over which did not have covid but what does it mean what did this covid do to us hardly anything in this third wave i thankfully hardly came across cases and we do connect very deeply to so many people so many contactors we are in you know, a full fledged counseling center where people are constantly in touch with us and they want to reach out to us so we know what's happening around in society right despite that we did not hear much tragic news you know forget about deaths not even you know people who landed up in very serious conditions in icus and all that it was negligible so normally we would think that the anxiety would have been less hey i tackled the third wave yeah i even got it either me or some of my loved ones actually turned out to be covid positive but nothing happened we had this little cough and fever and this and that and we were given some very basic medication and we took some rest and we were in isolation for few days and we bounced back and that was it now normally this should lead to people being happier people being more positive but look around and see people have become more negative people have become more careful people have become more withdrawn people are not willing to take any risk 
and why do you think that is happening because of anxiety i mentioned this to you before but i'm repeating again that anxiety is the interest that you pay on a loan which you have not taken worry is something which is real my father my grandfather is 90 years old is diabetic and has had a heart attack we have to monitor him very carefully we have to you know make sure that he gets his food and medicines on time whenever there's a slight change or some neglect his health takes a plummet and we may even have to rush him to hospital so i'm worried about my father very understandable because there it is the facts are there before you if i make a mistake if i neglect anything can happen to him but i also hear people saying my father is 80 years old fit and fine absolutely normal no comorbidities as you call it lives a perfect lifestyle on the uh, side there was a very cute joke somebody had mentioned they said my grandfather is 90 years old <clears throat> and he does not require glasses so people said oh his eyesight is that good is it that uh, even at 90 years he doesn't require glasses he said, no he doesn't require glasses because he drinks directly from the bottle this is the type of sense of humor that is slowly getting lost because of first wave second wave third wave we are becoming more and more morbid in our minds forget about comorbidities of the body and that is leading to a lot of anxiety people have started saying what will happen people are very very scared of things which are not happening also as it is as i told you the third wave hardly had any mortalities or any serious ailments despite the fact that innumerable people uh, uh, tested covid positive in fact a doctor friend of mine went to the extent of saying that there are only two categories of people left now those who have covid and they know it those who have covid and they don't know it because they haven't got the test done now taking that into account what we need to overcome now at a war footing is the anxiety about the future yes there may be a fourth wave and 10th wave a 20th wave is part of life we have to face it but it does not mean that we can uh, you know go on living under this anxiety under these uh, fears I remember uh, in school days, I was given the prestige of uh, playing the role of Julius Caesar, Shakespeare's uh, drama. And one of the dialogues which I was asked to you know, memorize and then uh, talk on the stage was, cowards die many times before their death. Cowards die many times before their death. The brave taste of death but once that is what julius caesar said and he went and faced death uh, knowing fully well that there's a threat to his life and that is what we need to understand sunita got a very nice uh, uh, you know quick uh, three minute clip of somebody who has presented this uh, issue of uh, anxiety so beautifully um, i have shared it with some of you but it's really worth spending that couple of minutes to just review it again it's in hindi but it's in very simple hindi it talks about a gentleman who recalls that when he was a child he didn't have a bicycle of his own a friend of his said i'll lend you my bicycle for one day and he was so thrilled using it for that one day the next day how he went into a depression because he said now my friend is going to come back and take it and what happened over the next four days let's hear it directly from him 
सुबह शाम मौत का डर कितने लोग कहाँ मर गए इंडिया में कितने लोग मर गए अमेरिका में कितने लोग मर गए यूरोप में कितने लोग मर गए सुबह शाम बस यही आंकड़ा जो है हमारे पास आ रहा है चाहे वो व्हाट्सएप हो चाहे वो टेलीविजन हो चाहे वो अखबार हो चाहे वो इंटरनेट हो एक ही आंकड़ा मृत्यु 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 मौत सारी दुनिया की चर्चा का विषय बन गया है लोग तो पहले भी मर रहे थे रोड एक्सीडेंट्स में मर रहे थे फ्लू से मर रहे थे भूखमरी से मर रहे थे फ्लाइट्स क्रैश हो रही थी हजारों लाखों कारण थे लोगों के मरने के लेकिन आज जो डर का माहौल है वो पहले कभी नहीं था दोस्तों मौत तो सिर्फ एक पल की है लेकिन मौत के उस एक पल का डर सारी जिंदगी को मार देता है हम इस दुनिया में अपनी मर्जी से नहीं आए हैं और ना ही अपनी मर्जी से जाएंगे तो उसके बारे में सोच सोच के इतना क्या डरना मैं जब छोटा था मेरे एक दोस्त ने मुझे एक बार साइकिल लैंड की और कहा कि अनिल आप इस साइकिल को आज जी भर के चलाएं और कल सुबह मैं साइकिल को लेने आऊंगा मैंने बहुत खुशी से साइकिल चलाई मैं सातवें आसमान पे था इस गली से उस गली और मैंने बहुत इंजॉय किया और रात को मैं थक के सो गया लेकिन जब मैं सुबह उठा तो मेरा दिल उदास था क्योंकि मुझे मालूम था वो साइकिल लेने आ रहा है सुबह से शाम हो गई वो साइकिल लेने ही नहीं आया लेकिन सारा दिन मैं साइकिल का आनंद नहीं उठा पाया एक दिन दो दिन तीन दिन चार दिन तक मेरा मित्र साइकिल लेने नहीं आया लेकिन उन चारों दिन में मैंने साइकिल का आनंद नहीं उठाया क्योंकि मुझे साइकिल के जाने का डर था चार दिन की जिंदगी है आनंद से साइकिल चलाए ना और जिस दिन वो साइकिल लेने वाला आएगा लौटा देंगे मेरे दोस्त जो बिना डर के खुशी से जीना सीख गया वो बिना किसी गम के बिना किसी दुख के परमेश्वर के पास चला जाएगा क्योंकि मौत और जिंदगी तो परमेश्वर के हाथ में है हमारे हाथ में तो सिर्फ आज का ये पल है जी हां हमारे हाथ में सिर्फ आज का ये पल है और इस पल को खुल के जिए जिंदगी तो पहले भी थी मगर अब हम जीना शुरू कर दें बिना डर के बिना भय के क्योंकि हमारे हाथ में आज का ये पल है और ये पल हमें परमेश्वर ने दिया है गॉड ब्लेस यू हाउ डिड यू लाइक दिस आइडिया रिफ्लेक्ट ओवर इट व्हाट आई बिलीव इन इन सिचुएशन लाइक दिस वेयर पीपल कीप सेइंग नो 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 व्हाट हैपेंस इफ आई सेंड माय चाइल्ड टू स्कूल एंड देन you know he uh, gets covid and something happens to him i've got only one child and i love him so dearly i can't afford to take that uh, risk so these are the type of situations which people are uh, you know going uh, um, through i have a very simple quote for such people which i actually practice on a regular basis prepare for the worst hope for the best prepare yourself sit down with your family members with your close people and do a brainstorming if a fourth wave comes what are we going to do plan it out right now systematically will we have enough groceries and this and that what will we do about this what will we do about that how is our internet connection uh, moving how do we take care of our parents or elderly people who are not with us or who are with us all that you work it out once you have done that now you have a positive mental attitude you hope for the best man lives on hope remember the greater the hope and hope has got nothing to do with reality of what you are facing the same way as anxiety has got nothing to do with reality of what you are facing hope ke takes you forward hope keeps you alive hope keeps you going so start doing those little little things which as the gentleman mr anil said prepare you you know for the worst you don't know whether this summer you will be able to go out for that two week vacation that we used to take every year don't wait for the summer now that there is no restriction on travel go for a two day vacation enjoy yourself thoroughly you don't have to go to, to foreign countries for having a good vacation you can have a good vacation in a beach side or a hill station just 6 hours away from your uh, uh, home do it sharpen your saw as they say start 
making arrangements to be to develop those skills which are going to take you through the ups and downs of whatever comes your uh, uh, way check out how your computer time is those of you who spend a lot of time constantly on the computers be it children be it adults please work to see there are lots of very proven methods by which you can reduce the computer stress on your eyes on your shoulders on your hands on your entire body in fact work on that because you don't know in the coming days as they have been threatening everybody may be working from home and that may be the new normal or whatever life brings you be ready to you know face uh, uh, that find out your own ways of stress relief and keep working on uh, them equally important take interest in your loved ones be practical and do something there's no point in sitting and saying my grandfather is 89 years old and he is the he is that i'm worried about what is going to happen instead of that spend quality time with your grandfather make him talk about his good old days give him that warmth and love and affection to show that how important he is to you how you care for him even if at a physical and practical level he cannot do much you still value him these are the type of things that we are sometimes you know neglecting and that is why i felt that it is necessary that i should bring these things to the attention and i can't stop repeating it again and again please keep away from social media please keep away from computer games computer gaming has been declared a mental disorder addiction to computer gaming has been declared a mental disorder by who before covid came so now can you understand how some of us may be getting addicted to computer gaming to social media to so many things in general i would say ask yourself how much time you are spending away from the screen that should be your you know basic what do you say aim in your day to day uh, life and believe me automatically your anxiety levels will come down you will stop brooding oh what happens if you do this i heard that there is some fourth wave coming i heard that there is some other variation which doesn't respond to this vaccination should i take a booster dose do whatever the experts tell you follow the guidelines which the government says and strictly follow the rules and regulations which are laid down but beyond that the government doesn't tell you what to do with your mind right it is you who have to decide and situations like these are a very great test of how good you are able to handle life believe me if we develop these skills in general what i was talking about and you know being able to reduce anxiety being able to prepare for the worst and developing a positive mental attitude which says i am hopeful i know that this too shall pass the worst will be over and i will be moving on to something else if you do that then you can really lead a very good quality of life regardless of what tomorrow brings us and since i mentioned tomorrow so many of us are concerned about children right it's now nearing 2 years since children have been locked up at the home except perhaps some brief uh, interludes which also some children didn't even get that so what is it that is making us so anxious about children i requested my colleague meera to do a little bit of a survey since she herself has a small child and she's you know directly connecting with other mothers who have small children let's say age group of 8 to 12 that uh, you know um, age uh, segment and she extensively surveyed the typical you know market thinking or a survey to find out what are the parents thinking about uh, the future and what anxiety they have about such uh, children so out of all the responses that we got she has narrowed down a few and she is here to share with us what they said and let us reflect over it yes so ali as i was talking to the parents 
uh, you know, they said that uh, their uh, old in-laws or parents are there in the house. And if the child goes out and meets other people, and what if something happens, who is going to take that responsibility? Who is going to, you know, uh, own that whole thing? Yeah. How many such incidents have taken place? How many children went out? And you know, let's be very frank about it. Children who have not stepped into school for the last uh, two years have been happily gallivanting all over the place, going to malls, going to cinemas, going for uh, picnics, jumping around with people, playing sports and games. And they have come back and they have been with their grandparents. Nothing has happened. Now, why do we want to deprive both our children and our elders, people in their sunset years, who need the love and affection of their grandchildren more than anything else today? And yet we are depriving them only because of this so-called fear. Let's hear what somebody else said. Yes, so there were a few parents who said, I'll wait for the vaccination. I waited for two years. This time also will pass. So we'll give the jab and then we'll send the kid to school. Uh, I have waited two years. So I'll wait for another two years. Is, does that sound logical? What I should actually be anxious about is what has my child lost out in these two years and I better make sure that I start working on it. Am I doing that? Or am I waiting for this so-called vaccine? I always remember Swami Vivekananda saying that, you know, this man had to cross a very fast flowing river and he got scared. He said, if I start swimming, I may be drowned or I may be swept away by the current. So he sat down under a tree and he said, I will wait till all the water goes away. Once all the water is going, gone, I will just walk across the dry river bed and reach the other side. This is what we are thinking, right? Next, what did they say, Mira? Yes, so they also said that if my child exchanged masks with his friends, in fact, there was a mom who saw that, got horrified and started checking for symptoms in the child. You know, she isolated him and started checking for symptoms. A little child is given a mask and he meets another child who has a mask which looks a little more attractive. So how they exchange pencils and erasers and balls. These kids decided to exchange masks and the mother said all over now. Done. My child is now going to have COVID. These are the type of anxieties that we are facing. Why are we doing this? If I am going to be scared that my child will exchange mask and get COVID, imagine the extremes to which I am allowing my anxiety to come in. Nothing will happen to the child, but my mental health will definitely go down. So many such, you know, amazing responses that we uh, got. Listen to one more. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, the school has around like six to seven hours that the child goes. So they felt that the teacher will take responsibility only in the class that, you know, they wear their mask, they don't touch anything. But what if they go into the playground or if, you know, uh, they go to the library and they take off their masks and they share food with each other. Who is going to take responsibility for that? <laughs> yeah. Frankly, between you and me, even that 40 minutes with the child is, uh, you know, in the class, do you really think the teacher can correct every one of those 40 children if his mask, uh, you know, slides a little below the nose or what? What paranoia, what extreme fears we are going uh, through and what is the purpose that we are achieving? So many such parents, I was amazed, you know, when Mira came and told us about the type of responses that she got. Some of the more weird ones we are not sharing with uh, you. But the fact remains that anxiety is killing them much more than COVID. Anxiety is crippling them much more than any ICU or ventilator. Even the government of India, as you are aware this time in the budget, has said that we have to do something about the mental health of people. And anxiety is one of the first steps where these mental health issues uh, come up. We have to start working on this, overcoming these type of uh, you know, anxieties. Please talk to people who have recovered. 
we have among our colleagues in Banjara, one person who I think has the claim of being the first one uh, to get uh, uh, COVID in Bangalore. Right in the beginning, horrifying, scary, whole family, in fact, hospitalized, came out fit and fine, very positive, went about, you know, counseling. In fact, we have this uh, uh, cell which does counseling for uh, specifically for COVID for positive people. We were been allotted that work for by the BBMP in our uh, wards. So she was one of the prime people at the peak of the uh, second wave, particularly she was so active. And you know what happened to her last month? She got COVID all over again. And this time nothing, little cough, little upset, little this, and she recovered. So taking this into account, what I want to know is, I would like to ask Mira, you have surveyed, you have found out, you have spoken to so many mothers, but the point now is, what are we practically doing about it? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, those are counselors on the phone. We have email counseling. We have face-to-face -face counseling. So you're most welcome to come and talk to us about your emotional issues, your anxieties, even COVID anxiety. And we also do the career counseling wherein, you know, we guide the child to understand and uh, carve a niche for their uh, careers and lives forward. We also are starting an online program that is the certification in child and adolescent development, wherein we understand children right from pregnancy to 18 years. So everything that you need to understand about a child is covered in that. And if you want to become a counselor yourself, if you want to learn the skills of counseling, if you want to help people around you, you want to help yourself, then we also have the diploma in counseling skills which is right here at Banjara, and you can really enhance your life and others' lives by doing that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mira. What you just heard from Mira, those few cases were only, you know, examples and droplets but actually speaking a lot of work went into this which finally brought us to the point of uh, understanding at a deeper uh, uh, level tamanna has recalled a very good uh, retro song from bollywood aage bhi jaane na tu piche bhi jaane na tu jo bhi hai bas yahi ek pal hai this is the moment to be thoroughly enjoyed. I think that is the basic lesson we should have all learned from COVID that this is the moment to be severed and enjoyed. Okay, Mahima says, definitely children are going through a lot. What is to socialize is forgotten. Even the child who is to be very good with society, this is what I'm trying to press the point home that children have not lost out on progress, children have regressed. Children have gone backwards. Children, whatever they had learned earlier, they have lost that. We have to start not from the point where we stopped, but maybe one or two years earlier. Starting from academics, a lot of teachers are observing and complaining that what we had taught children two years back also they have forgotten. So we'll have to go back maybe three years or four years and start them all over again. Vinita says, as usual, your talks are very inspiring. Very truly said, it's in our minds that we fear so much. This time, myself and my entire family couldn't escape COVID. But believe me, we all handled it well with calm mind. And it was so good to see our family and friends giving us strength and emotional support. And that is what happens for everything. Why do we isolate COVID? A bereavement takes place. Somebody has a financial crisis. Somebody has something else. Somebody has to be uprooted from one city and move to another city. Hasn't it happened to many of us? And every time there will be some good people, be it our own relatives and friends, sometimes it could be strangers who reach out and uh, help out. So that's how life uh, 
you know, goes on step by step. Okay, Mastrick says, a healthy home environment is a symphony of happiness. A few disagreements and maybe an occasional squabble, maybe sometimes a little more than occasional also. Okay, from parenting styles to division of work, the disputes between a couple are a part and parcel of a normal family, I agree. The pandemic fatigue has meant that more and more couples or families across the globe have been fighting more in front of their children. How do we address it before it snowballs into this? Yes, today afternoon, in fact, at 3.30, we are doing this uh, uh, webinar, which has been organized by this uh, group called The Mostic. Please do join us. We are focusing on parents, you know, who are having these differences, arguments and all that. What happens? What is the impact on the children and how they can minimize that impact and what they can do uh, about it? Surika says no amount of anxiety can change the future. But how can we ignore those disturbing thoughts? How can we build an emotional wall? Surika, more than building a wall, we need to change direction. You see right in front of you anxiety. That anxiety is flashing its bright lights on your face and making you feel upset. All we have to do is to turn around. I remember in my childhood, we used to go a lot for hunting shikar. That time it was not banned. And in fact, it was supposed to be very fashionable in, when my father was district, uh, posted in the uh, you know, remote districts of Maharashtra. We used to go. Uh, that was one of the very few livelihoods in those, I mean, entertainments in those areas. So we used to take this Jeep, remove the cloth top and then go in. And it was a very interesting thing that we used to have this thing called a spotlight, a very sharp, piercing light. When we used to see some uh, you know, deer, we used to uh, focus that spotlight on the deer. The deer looks at the spotlight and gets blinded, gets totally mesmerized. And it doesn't move. It is like, you know, it is just uh, paralyzed at that place. And the hunter takes out his rifle, carefully aims and shoots. And the deer dies. But the interesting thing is, all that the deer had to do was to turn its face away from the spotlight. And it would be back to normalcy and it could run and escape. But she doesn't know that. And that is what we are doing. We are staring into this COVID spotlight, not even willing to turn our head uh, uh, away. Okay. Uh, Lakshmi says, uh, where did Lakshmi go? Ah. Uh, Aliji, we were positive, all well now, still dreaming of having a mask free life. Yes, it will come, Lakshmi. There's no doubt about it. The mask free life will come. But right now, let us remove these masks of anxiety, fear, paranoia that many of us have put on, right? Okay, Pushpa says we should follow child appropriate behavior that is new normal and live. Stop worrying. We are treating COVID patients, giving anesthesia to COVID patients every day. In the first wave, we had anxiety, but it has made us strong emotionally as well as immunologically. This is from Dr. Pushpa, our old student who does extensive counseling work, but by profession, she is an anesthesiologist, which means she works on a regular daily basis with you know uh, uh, people who are undergoing surgery people who are in icus people who need in intensive and care or whatever so she knows she has been observing this not only in the last two years of covid but 20 years before that as a qualified uh, anesthesiologist so he can learn so much from these people isn't it Haji Alka says COVID has given us a good thing as well as we got a chance to understand each other, completely things together, self-defendency without domestic help. And the best is taking care of loved ones. Haji, this is what I'm saying, that let us count our blessings. So many nice things have also happened. But I have one question. Are we going to keep it up? The day the masks are removed, the day the, day the restrictions are removed and the world uh, says no more COVID and nothing to worry about. Are we going to go back to ignoring our near and dear? 
are we going to forget our friends? Are we going to get so complacent that we will not look up people who we earlier used to care for and we used to inquire about them, do some small gestures to them? Will we become socially isolated? That is one caution that I want each one of us to give to ourselves. Shreya said, I think we both can on this Ali Zindagi ek safar hai suhana. Yaha kal kya ho kisne jana. Ke sara sara, they say in English. No? Whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. Ke sara sara. What we need to do is keeps coming back time and again. Count your blessings. See the things that we have actually benefited. Build on them. The new normal is not going to be sitting uh, work from home or putting on masks and using sanitizers and all that. The new normal will be lessons learned, courage developed, how much we have changed for the uh, better. Yes, a lot of small, small things have been happening both on the positive and the negative uh, um, side. But I don't want us to become complacent on the one side, and I don't want us to become paranoid and anxious on the other side. I would like all of us, if you have not done it so far, to do what they normally call as a SWOT analysis, no? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So we know third wave of COVID is now coming down. Where do I stand as an individual? Where do I stand in my professional life? Where do I stand with regard to my nearest and dearest? And where do I stand with regard to my social contacts and people who I consider as my friends, acquaintances, distant relatives, people who have been nice to me? earlier, maybe my old teachers, whoever I have interacted with. All these, I think it is a very good time to start introspecting and bringing in some change. And I come back to the topic of the day. What prevents us from bringing in that change? What prevents us from being proactive and moving on to Creating a better path and a better life for ourselves is anxiety. The moment that lurking anxiety comes in, uh, uh, you know, we take one step back without even realizing it. And we start giving excuses. That's a funny thing. Like the examples which Meera shared with you. One person says, I'm waiting for the vaccine. One person says, I've got old parents and my child will bring COVID back from outside and will pass it on to the uh, parents. I don't think, you know, there's much of logic in whatever we are uh, uh, saying. To what extent can you go on protecting your old parents or your small uh, children? Surika says, how do we dissolve the stress that has accumulated from the past experience? That's a very good question. So I think we should all be working on this. I have my past uh, stresses which I've built up. How do I dissolve? See, dealing with uh, stress has to be done at two levels. One is on a day-to-day -day basis so that my quality of life improves. The other is to resolve the past and get over whatever the impact it had happened. So let's take the first one. What do I do on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis? On a day-to-day -day basis, I have to find my own means of stress relief. I am very particular about that. Every one of us is built differently. Every one of us has different needs and wants. So what suits one person may not suit another person. One person may try out one form of yoga or meditation or something and find that it has given tremendous benefit. Hear that person out. Find out how it is done. If necessary, get the tapes, techniques, suggestions, and whatever. Try it out. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. Move on to the next one. Start making a list of all the activities 
which you yourself can identify, which make you feel lighter, which make you feel relaxed, which give you a little boost, even if it is momentary. I love, you know, e eating butterscotch ice cream from that particular place. Every now and then, can I just go and, uh, you know, have that ice cream and pamper myself and come back, whether anybody comes with me or not. See now, Sunita has given you uh, quite a few uh, tips, which are, as I said, possible, provided it suits you. Some people like to do exercise. You know that by mind and body are very closely connected to each other. So if you have a fitter body, your stress levels uh, to the mind reduce. Playing with a pet, that is one thing. Those of you who are not pet lovers, you don't even have to get a pet. Adopt a street dog. Start playing with him. He makes no demands on your time or anything. You feel like feeding him, you feed. If you don't feel like feeding him, don't worry. But playing with a pet uh, uh, or playing with an animal really gives uh, relief to a lot of people. Meditation and yoga to various people in different forms. Sometimes, you know, even taking a nap and relaxing when I need uh, to unwind. Many of us love to listen to music and we enjoy when some good music is being uh, uh, played. Sometimes even that meditation music, some of us use uh, that very beneficially. There are different types of uh, music which are connected to meditation and you lie down, close your eyes and listen to that uh, music and you do uh, deep breathing. So like that, there are different ways and means from which you have to identify what suits uh, you so that the accumulated um, stress at least does not affect you on a day-to-day -day basis. Your quality of life improves at least marginally. The second part of it is to go back into the past and work on dissolving the accumulated stress. That needs to be done on a longer term and very systematically. Very often we need to do it with the help of somebody. It's not that easy for us to do it because we may not be consistent. We may not, we may sidetrack, we may not, uh, we may lose direction. So if you have a good person whom you can interact with, I don't even want to use the word uh, counselor. We are definitely there as Mira has put up, uh, I mean, uh, Sunita has put up snow. We do free counseling on telephone. We do it through email. We do it face to um, uh, face. So, and I'm sure there are innumerable other individuals as well as institutions in every city, not just Bangalore, who are there ready to listen to you and help you to unburden yourself. So you go back into the past. Recall all the stressful events. Some of them may have been major. Some of them may have been very minor and we tend to neglect yeah, that happened at that time. You know, I had a tiff with my boss or I had failed in that exam. But that was long back. I've forgotten about it and moved on. Not necessarily. You may still be carrying that baggage. So it's worth going back into the past. Reliving that experience, talking it over with somebody, identifying firstly the emotion that you felt at that time. I not only felt angry with my teacher because he scolded me for no fault of mine. I was also very angry with my father because he put me in this school. I wanted to go to another school, but he insisted and put me in this school. So my anger more than the teacher. Teacher was one horrible person among all the good teachers. So I know I can ignore him. You know, he was a nasty character, but I was more angry with my father. Why couldn't he have listened to me? Why did he force me to go to this particular uh, uh, school? So that was the emotion that I went through at that time. Now we need to fast forward and ask ourselves, how much is that anger relevant even today? Do I still feel angry with my father for what happened 10 years or 40 years back? Sometimes the answer is yes, if you're truthful. So you identify the emotions which are present today. You know, one of the very interesting ways and how uh, I uh, sort of help people to decide. If I say, 
Hey, uh, uh, you mentioned in passing that uh, you had gone through such a bad experience with XYZ. Uh, uh, can we talk about it? And I can see that person getting tense and red in the face and saying, no, 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 I don't want to talk about it. It's over, done with, Ali. No, it doesn't hurt me now. That was many, many years back. Now it doesn't happen. I don't want to think about it again and again, you know. I've forgotten it. I have moved on. So I don't want to talk about it. Now, did you see the tone and the body language? What does it indicate? That yes, I'm still suffering from that stress. I have not been able to overcome that. And gently, firmly, I keep telling the person, whenever you are ready, Come back and we'll sit up and talk about it. Just recalling, reliving, identifying the emotion then and identifying the emotion now is enough to set you forward in the healing process. Beyond that, of course, there are different ways and means which vary from person to person, situation to situation. But let me assure you that every possible old stress can be resolved. Here's a very interesting uh, chart of emoticons which Sunita has put up uh, uh, for us. I use this. You can download one of these charts, put it somewhere in front of uh, you, and more so if you have children in the house. It's so interesting to see how children identify. So you look at these pictures and say, what am I feeling right now? I am feeling guilty because of something that I did. I am feeling sad. I am feeling happy. The moment I can identify it, I know how my reactions and how my actions are going to be. When I feel suspicious, I'll behave in a different way. When I feel frustrated, I'll behave in a different way. It is one of the greatest learnings that you can give to a growing child to help a child label his or her emotions. So when you start with something like these emoticons and put a name to it, like the second one you see over here is confused. So you have this youngster who's telling you, I'm not sure whether to continue with this relationship or not. I'm getting pulled in two different directions. I like this guy, but I also am a little wary about these, these, these. So you say, okay. Do you accept and admit that right now you are confused? So that is one thing that we have identified. Now, along with the confusion, what else is happening uh, uh, to you? I'm feeling frightened. Feel if I jump into this relationship, something can go wrong and my whole life can get destroyed. Oh, you're having this fear. You're fe feeling frightened. Okay. Let us see how we can overcome that. The more we can keep overcoming emotions, the better is our ability to overcome the past stressful situations, as Surekha asked, to be able to slowly bring down the accumulated stress of the uh, past, step by step, slowly, with patience. But it can be done. This is the whole idea about what we are discussing uh, today, that we need to accept that, you know, ups and downs will always be there in uh, life. There's another nice proverb uh, as an addition to uh, Surekha's question. You know, one of the greatest life skills is to be able to handle stresses with least distress. Can you handle stress with least distress? This is a skill. And this has to be built up over a period of time. You don't wait till a fourth wave comes or you lose your job or you have a big fight with somebody close to you. That's not the time to start building it up. I'm a very strong believer that the best time to bring about change is when you are not forced to change, when there is no pressure on you, when there is no compulsion, it looks like, yes, life is acceptable, tolerable. I am going through smoothly. 
that is the time when you can very rationally, very simply think how I can bring about a further improvement into my uh, life. But those people who deny, even this anxiety that I've been talking about today, people who deny that I am stressed out, I am anxious, I am feeling uh, scared, they are the ones who suffer most. There's nothing wrong in admitting your vulnerability. We are all human beings. We all have our emotions. But the more I acknowledge and accept whatever is happening inside me, I don't have to go and announce it to public or tell other people. I can be very selective in whom I want to share with. But it is, I feel, necessary to share with at least one or two people whom you can trust. If you don't have such people, try them out. First, talk about very small and minor issues and see what is their response. If you get a good response from the person, then you know that, yes, I can trust this person. I can share deeper and deeper uh, things with this person. And that assurance that I have somebody with whom I can talk to uh, immediately. Ha, Surika, uh, uh, says that no alternative creates more anxiety. There is no alternative, you know, that TINA syndrome, as I call it, T-I-N-A. There is no alternative. It definitely creates more anxiety. How can we help them understand that there is always an uh, uh, alternative? You know how this anxiety and these things build up. There was a nice, cute little joke about a man who was going on a very remote, you know, country road in his car. He was driving alone in the middle of the night and his car got punctured. He got down to change the tire and he looked at the stepney. Stepney was there, but the spanner was missing. He had to open the uh, nuts and bolts using the spanner, right? The spanner was missing. Somehow somebody had taken it out from his dickey and had not replaced it. And here he is stuck in the middle of the night on a very remote road where there's hardly any traffic. What does he do? The spare is there, but he can't change it. He got very exasperated. And he looked far away on, on a hillock, little distance. He saw what looked like a big farmhouse. And he saw that one or two lights were also open. So he said, there are some people living over there. And it looks as though they are still awake. So I won't be disturbing them. And having such a big farmhouse, they would definitely have a vehicle, which means they would have a spanner. So I'll borrow the spanner, change the wheel, and push off. So he started climbing up that hill to go to that house. But his thoughts started coming in his mind. What if those uh, people have uh, ferocious dogs? I'm so scared of dogs. Those dogs can bite me very badly. Okay, what about the, what if they think nowadays there are so many decoities and all that going on? Supposing they think that I'm a decoit. Then he got self-righteous and he said, do I look like a decoit? Am I carrying a gun or uh, something? Why should these people... Uh, feel that way. Can't they make out that I'm an educated and respectable person? All this is a dialogue going on in his mind. Then he started thinking, supposing I ask them for a spanner, they will definitely have. But if they say, you'll take the spanner, go change the wheel, and then run away with our spanner. What? Do I look like a thief? Do I look like the type of person who will take a hundred rupee spanner and run away, particularly when you've done a free? See, he built up his, you know, mental trauma to such an extent that when he went and rang the bell and the gentleman opened the door and said, yes, how can I help you? He said, keep your bloody spanner. I don't want it. And he turned around and walked off. Now, this may be a joke, but this is what actually happens in real life. That is why we should not get into the Tina syndrome that there are no alternatives, right? Sandhya says, my friend of about 60 years is stressed due to domestic disturbance due to her alcoholic husband. How can she be helped? At the first instance, give her as much support as you can because she's entering into that age of, you know, the sunset years and where she should have found more comfort and companionship from her husband. She's finding that She's you know, losing out his companionship because of his alcoholism or whatever it is. So that's the first step. Beyond that, what we can do, we have to understand much more deeper into how their relationship is, what they 
person is doing, what she is doing, whether there are any other family members involved, all those factors have to come in. And as we have been telling you, if there is some way which we can help, all you have to do is just give us a call or you know, send us an email and we'll reply to you. We'll give you certain tips, maybe how you can handle it. Or if you feel you want to pass them on to us, request her saying that, you know, I know these people and they will uh, um, help you. Why don't you get in touch with them? Maybe we can directly help uh, uh, them. These are the type of things that we can uh, do. So with that, let me wind up for this session. And Sunita is going to tell you what do we have lined up for you next week. Hello. Oh, just a second. Ali, I'll come there. Sure. Hello everyone. So we have this wonderful topic next week. It's called why men shout and why women cry. So uh, many of us, uh, you know, we always have this, uh, uh, you know, why, why do men shout when they're angry, right? And when women are angry and all, they just go and cry. And when men feel uncomfortable when women cry and women feel uncomfortable when men shout. So we have always had this uh, disparity between the way we react to certain situations right so uh, we thought let's why not address it right so tomorrow so next week which is uh, 12th february saturday we'll be having this wonderful topic so looking forward to seeing you all uh, on uh, next saturday as well uh, do uh, join in 11 a.m and of course yeah if you have your own insights and thoughts and if you would like to share with us uh, even before uh, next Saturday, feel free to live, uh, write to us. You have our email IDs, phone numbers. Just text us, write us, and uh, we'll be glad to include your point of view also uh, in the uh, uh, next week's live. All right. Having said that, I'm going to play some slides which we have used all through today's uh, live webinar. Uh, do look through it. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye.